Rob Marty, uh, good evening to you. It's not the most exciting part of the bill, and a lot of Americans are waiting for the money to get into their own part uh, in their own pockets. But it may be the most important part for American cities: the state and local government dollars. Uh, like you said, Rob, so much money, and it's got to go to so many cities. So we decided we would take a closer look at what these dollars mean to American cities, and we went, as you said, to Kansas City. The yeas are fifty. The days of 49, the bill as amended is passed. There was sharp debate on the issue of money for state and local governments in the COVID relief package that passed the Senate Saturday. We are not going to give bailout money to sanctuary states and sanctuary cities. We can do both. We can uh, address infrastructure and help our state and local governments that have been hammered by COVID. The bill now back in the House all agree on the problems back home. They are facing things such as having to not fill fire fighter slots, uh, put off buying police cruisers. But they don't all agree on how to fix them. They changed it to punish any state that Donald Trump won except for two and reward their, their states that they won. The political debate, of course, happens in Washington, but the real world impact of the $350 billion that are earmarked for state and local governments have their ultimate impact here in places like Kansas City, cities that are desperate for those funds. Cities really need this. This isn't just something that is uh, kind of tangential to our normal operations. Facing a $70 million budget shortfall, Kansas City Mayor Quentin Lucas says the consequences are real. You know, you never say it's fully essential because we'll try to always find a way, but, you know, if we don't get that stimulus funding, there's going to be some really tough cuts this year in Kansas City. The mayor says that his city, nicknamed the Heart of America, is on life support in the middle of a pandemic. And so many services that cities use, we cannot afford right now because the drop in sales taxes, the drop in a city like this one of conventions and entertainment, people not in your sports stadium. Many of the cuts would come from city services like police and fire. It is difficult sometimes to uh, get through to the politicians exactly what we do. Tim Dupin has 24 years as a Kansas City firefighter, now serving as president of Local 42 of the International Association of Firefighters here. Uh, we go, we respond to every medical call, we respond to every car wreck, you know, every heart attack, every diabetic seizure, every, you know, every medical emergency. The needs are at least as dire with Kansas City's police, a department run independently of the city by a board of police commissioners. You're somewhere between uh, bankruptcy and bailout. And, and I think that's the, a, a reality. Lawyer and former FBI agent Nathan Garrett serves on that board as they wrestle with major cuts. I mean, it's dire. You know, we're losing officers right now, you know, at an alarming rate. But Garrett, like so many in this debate, feels that while the aid is essential, it can't all be blamed on the pandemic. Then I'm behind it. Uh, but I'm behind it recognizing uh, and being sympathetic to the concerns that some have with regard to bailing out cities who uh, have gotten themselves in this position. That in a city like this one, we were looking at perhaps $180 million coming in. Probably that first half is already spent on things like providing for your frontline workers and services. Tim Dupin and the fire department see it the same way. You really need to evaluate where those, where those monies are going. We need to be, make sure that they are being spent correctly. We could have worked together. Some have pointed to congressional Republicans voting against this aid as being tantamount to defunding the police, a campaign mantra used by some of them against Democrats last year in the wake of the murder of George Floyd. If during the summer you were saying you back the blue, if during the summer and today you're saying that you do not support the defund the police movement, then the real way to actually take care of these things is to fund them. And I can understand it from a, a political perspective why some on the left would want to say, okay, now the Republicans are defunding the police. I don't believe that to be a fair characterization of it. But Mayor Lucas, a Democrat, also says that right now it shouldn't be about slogans for any city. The real thing that's happening is everyone will be defunded unless this bill passes because we do not have the resources to help support so many of the things that are core to service delivery in government. 
Rob Marnie, uh, one thing that your reporter and then your anchor got wrong is 350 billion. It's now up to 360 billion. That was inserted by Chuck Schumer as the bill went out of the Senate. So it's 360 billion dollars. And Frank Lucas, uh, uh, Quentin Lucas, the mayor of Kansas City, there. Uh, you know, he today got a, a little bit more of a highlight because Roy Blunt, the longtime senator, longtime congressman from uh, Missouri, stepping down, not running for re-election. A lot of people think. And, uh, and Quentin Lucas saying that he is considering the race. A lot of people think that he is going to be a formidable Democrat in a race for an open Senate seat there in Kansas City. But I have to tell you again, uh, the importance of these dollars is, is you can see the desperation on the mayor's face. And this is something that the cities are waiting to hear tomorrow when this bill is voted on or maybe even Wednesday. Marnie, Rob.